Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Wednesday, February the 20th, 2013. Now, yesterday, Paul Joseph Watson broke a story that sounded like a parody from The Onion. It's about a, a company making targets of pregnant women, elderly, and even children at the behest of law enforcement. Today, we've got a couple of updates on that. We've got a reaction from a retired police officer. He said, uh, desensitizing the police is training uh, a, a for sick, uh, the training of six social engineers. He said, uh, you are the target of our out of control government. Right here he says, T.F. Stern, writing on his website, The Moral Liberal, states that the cardboard cutouts of pregnant women, children, and elderly citizens for police target practice can only have been created by a sick mind with the intention of having police officers of Homeland Security goons completely disregard humanity. He said law enforcement officers trained for what-if scenarios like robbers, burglars, or just bad guys in general, but he said there's something seriously wrong here. He said police have essentially become domestic standing armies. How will police officers react, he asks, after they no longer believe they're part of a society which they have been charged with policing, when they have become used to shooting pregnant ladies and old men? As odd as it may sound, coming from an old retired cop, if police recognition skills, the red flags and alert to danger were delayed for a moment, so be it. I'd rather get shot than develop the attitude that all or even most of my neighbors were a constant threat. Well, that's uh, from what a uh, retired cop says. Unfortunately, that is becoming less and less the mentality of the police these days. And in further information today, uh, it was noted by uh, Paul Joseph Watson that the company behind this controversial uh, targets actually has a long relationship with the Department of Homeland Security. In an article entitled, Company Behind Shooting Targets of Children Received $2 Million from the DHS, Paul Joseph Watson notes that these, this company uh, that has targets and images of children, pregnant women, and elderly gun owners received almost $2 million in contracts from Homeland Security. Minnesota-based Law Enforcement Training Incorporated brags of its close relationship with the Department of Homeland Security. And while it's not known whether DHS purchased these no-hesitation targets, a company representative admitted to a customer yesterday that law enforcement agencies had requested at least one of the images which depicted a pregnant woman as a threat. A customer who called Law Enforcement Inc. yesterday told InfoWars that the company informed him the targets were strictly for Department of Homeland Security and other law enforcement agencies. Well, I wonder what would happen if uh, somebody started selling or maybe a target, uh, 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 they started using them at, at shooting ranges, if they started using targets of Obama or senators exclusively. I wonder how they would feel about that. Perhaps they would feel about the same way that we do as uh, citizens when we see that type of thing being done by law enforcement. Maybe they would send the Secret Service to investigate that, who knows. They've done that for people who just make verbal threats. This is something that is a bit more than just a verbal threat. Let's take a look at a quick video that really shows some of these targets. Hi, I'm Janet Napolitano, Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security. Homeland Security begins with hometown security. It seems apparent that our citizens are staying off the streets, which may make scarring particularly difficult even with this year's rule changes. To recap those revisions, women are still worth 10 points more than men in all age brackets, but teenagers now rack up 40 points and toddlers under 12 now rate a big 70 points. The big score, anyone, any sex over 75 years old has been up to 100 points. As always, how fast you move determines how long you live. Well, those targets you saw in that parody, now that was a parody, uh, but those targets that you saw were actually the real targets produced by Law Enforcement Inc. at the behest of the Homeland Security and other law enforcement agencies. 
This, this, this is something that is just uh, beyond belief. And the, and the soundtrack that you heard there was from uh, an old movie, uh, Death Race, uh, uh, I think that was done in 1974. But uh, today we have uh, imitations of what in the past was really just a dystopian view of the future. Now, this is something, this, this uh, ammunition and targets and that sort of thing is something that we broke uh, uh, quite some time ago. Paul Joseph Watson broke this, and I believe it was last summer that I uh, first started talking about this. And we were ridiculed, InfoWars was ridiculed, as well as Drudge, who picked up the story, uh, for being alarmist. But they were actually uh, data that was picked up off of the uh, actual request for purchases from Homeland Security. Now, recently, things have changed. Uh, Breitbart has picked it up. Even Mark Levin has started talking about why does the Department of Homeland Security and other federal agencies need such massive amounts of ammunition. As they pointed out, uh, at the rate that we were using ammunition during the Iraq War, this would be equivalent to 24 years worth of ammunition. Now, the Associated Press, at the end of last week, tried to cover for Homeland Security, and they said, well, this is simply target practice. But let's do the math. They're talking about 90 different federal agencies, 70,000 agents that are using this for target practice. And they said that works out to about 15 million rounds a year. Well, that's true. And that's not an excessive number. That's only about 200 per agent. Uh, we have to ask, though, do we really need 90,000 agents who are trained to shoot? And isn't this something like uh, uh, scores of agents who are harassing our people and eating out their substance? Do we need another Declaration of Independence? But take a look at that number, the 15 million. What hasn't been reported is that is only, that is about, if they were to buy that and uh, buy ammunition for those people, and that was the, the gist of the AP story, was that they were buying ammunition and doing it in bulk so they could save money. But how much bulk do they need to get? At 15 million rounds a year, which is what the AP said they were using, that would be 133 years worth of target practice. 133 years. Do they really need to buy 133 years worth of ammunition for target practice in order to save a little bit of money? It's ridiculous. No, actually, it looks like the target is really you. And uh, as we see with these targets that have come out, it looks like the American public is the target. And it looks like, even beyond that, they're buying massive amounts of ammunition in order to dry up the supply of ammunition for the American public. Now, if you remember at the beginning of the Obama administration, right after he took office, they stopped selling. They issued an order for the Department of Defense to stop selling once used brass into the civilian market. And that affected, that was going to affect in a large way, uh, the price and the availability of ammunition. Now, we had two senators who kicked back against that. Senator Baucus and, um, and John Tester uh, kicked back against that. But now it comes to light that as recently as December uh, 2012, uh, this policy that had been reversed at, uh, after the senators protested it, this policy is now still in effect. We have uh, Fort, um, we have uh, Fort, um, sorry, Fort Drum in New York, the actual Army Garrison, is now recycling their brass in a different way. They're spending money to crush it into raw materials and selling those raw materials at a much reduced rate to China. They could sell the uh, brass to the American market as once shoes brass and make a lot more money, but instead they're crushing this and selling it just as surplus brass to the Chinese market. This is, um, we have an article here where someone has uh, written to, uh, it's a site called um, congress.org and encourages people to get involved and write their congressman. And what we just had on the screen there was uh, someone's letter uh, talking about the history of what happened with this recycled military brass and asking their congressman as well as Obama to ab abide by the law. And we have here, it's public law 111-118, which goes back to December of 2009. And we have on the document cam here, if we can pull it up, that law says in section 8019, it says that uh, to demilitarize or destroy small arms ammunition or ammunition components that are not otherwise prohibited from commercial sale under federal law unless the small arms ammunition or ammunition components are certified by the Secretary of the Army or designee as unserviceable or unsafe for further use. So it says that they will not uh, destroy that, but they will sell it unless it has been designated as being unsafe for further use. So these once fired brass shells should be, according to this public law that was uh, 
put in in December 2009 in reaction to the Obama administration uh, uh, declaring that the Department of Defense was no longer going to sell small arms ammunition. They passed this law. Now we find in the 2012 document, if you can get a shot of this, uh, this is from Fort Drum in New York, and this is their plans for integrated solid waste plan management. And we see here that uh, in section 7.4.4, right down here, okay, brass from expended munitions. It says brass from expended ammunition or munitions is recycled. Expended munitions must be free of any explosive hazard or residue and be crushed, shredded, or otherwise destroyed prior to public sale. At Fort Drum, brass from expended ammunition is processed through a brass deformer machine located at the transfer station. And the deformed brass is purchased by a scrap metal vendor. So that's what they're currently doing with it now in violation of the uh, previous acts that uh, said in 2009 that they would continue to sell this uh, small arms ammunition into the civilian market. They also say on this document that within the fenced area is another small building where brass from expended ammunition is deformed and stored for resale. So this is in violation of the uh, law that was passed back in 2009, but we see three years later, they're still doing this in spite of the fact that ammunition is at an all-time high in terms of scarcity and price. Uh, it's very scarce, and the price is very high, and the military could be making a lot of money in helping the civilian market to uh, get the price of the ammunition down as well. But that's not what they want to do. Now, an economic article uh, from Reuters questions whether or not the Iran economy is far from collapse as sanctions tighten. They said, a year after U.S. sanctions largely froze Iran out of the global banking system, shops in the Iranian capital are crowded. Finding a seat at good restaurants can be difficult. And ski resorts in the mountains north of Tehran continue to attract Tehran's glamorous and well-heeled. They go on to say that... Uh, the IMF estimated in October that Iran would post a general state budget deficit of 3.9% of gross domestic product this year, easily bearable for a government with a gross debt of only 9% of GDP. And so that causes us to ask uh, exactly how does the Iranian economy compare with some of these benchmarks to the United States economy? Uh, how, is the, how are the sanctions affecting them and how are they coping with it? Let's take a look at this graph here. And you can see in this graph that uh, in the Iranian economy, even though they have a uh, budget deficit uh, it's of uh, about uh, 9%, um, it is twice that the U.S. deficit is uh, twice what their budget deficit is, and our debt-to-GDP ratio is six times what Iran's is. And so that brings up a question. Uh, is our government trying harder to destroy our economy than it is trying to destroy Iran's economy? And whether or not it is incompetence or whether or not it's deliberate. And we can certainly question that as we see what they're doing with ammunition. We see what they're doing with targets of the American public. Uh, the question is whether it's incompetence or whether it's deliberate. Our economy and the government's actions by most economic measurements is doing worse than that of Iran. Well, our quote for the day is from Thomas Jefferson. And he says, my reading of history convinces me that most bad government results from too much government. I wonder if Thomas Jefferson would think that 90 federal agencies with 70,000 armed agents is too much government. And he might also say that's a government that looks like it's breaking bad. Well, we, we'll be right back after this break. We've got an interview with Alex Jones, and he's going to be talking about Operation Paul Revere. Now, if you don't know, that's a $115,000 cash contest prize uh, for and also an online virtual film festival. And uh, Alex is going to give those of you who want to participate some insights into what we're looking for and the rest of you tell you why we're going to be doing this. It's a very important film contest, we believe, for liberty. And that'll be coming up right after the break. Infowars.com is proud to introduce the new Infowars Skateboards by Alien Workshop. Skaters have always been against the grain socially. Now wake up your friends politically. Just go to InfoWarsStore.com. We have Divide and Conquer our brainwashing. Then take your deck to your local skate shop, pick out your own trucks, your own wheels, and then hit the streets and wake some people up. 
Here is legendary skateboarder Jake Nunn. This one has a lot more concave than I have on my board, and I like concave. It makes it easier to turn and feel the board. It's pretty cool. I mean, it's almost the same shape as mine. It's not really a sport, and it's not really art. It's just kind of, kind of freedom, you know. I've listened to Alex Jones for a long time, and I love what Infowars does. I've always loved Alien Workshop too. Like, I think it's kind of cool you guys got together. This one's pretty nice. Definitely one for the wall, one for the collection. Also good to skate. Get these limited edition decks at InfoWarsStore.com. This is Jake Nunn. Get these beautiful new skateboards at InfoWars.com. Alien Workshop collaboration. Good stuff. Alex Jones here with a message that could revolutionize health in this country. Going back about a year and a half ago, I began to learn about the incredible health effects of Longevity products. Aaron Dykes lost 92 pounds. We're going to show you some before and afters. Aaron, break down what happened, your story. I've worked really hard with diet and exercise to try to lose weight, but I just didn't get the results. It just didn't happen. Then I saw what you were doing with InfoWarsTeam.com. I wasn't even trying to lose weight, but I got it because I wanted to feel better energy. I wanted that nutrition. Didn't even understand how that could kickstart my own weight loss goals, but the products did that for me. I found myself suddenly losing weight, more energetic, wanting to exercise, wanting to eat the right foods. And they don't even advertise it as weight loss. I want to challenge our radio listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com. Sign up as a distributor and get wholesale pricing discounts at InfoWarsTeam.com. Operation Paul Revere, the largest film contest out there right now, $115,000 in cash prizes, as well as an opportunity to get before a huge audience. If you're a film professional, this is your chance to get to hundreds of thousands of people on just our YouTube channel. Right now, I've got with us Alex Jones. Alex, tell us a little bit about what you're trying to do with this film contest. Well, David, about a month ago, we launched this, and it's got a small window of three months because tyranny is taking over this country and whatever your idea of liberty is out there we want you to make a short film or it could even be a long film the rules are at infowars.com forward slash contest uh, to resist this tyranny mm -hmm. that's why we're calling it operation paul revere and you could be what you call a liberal a conservative a constitutionalist a libertarian it could be a three-minute piece it could be a two-hour piece it could be fiction nonfiction, drama a musical we want to just encourage that dynamic human spirit to get involved and to go out there and warn and awaken people to become politically involved themselves so mm -hmm. we're trying to initiate brush fires in the minds of men and women out there in the animating contest for liberty to get them to cause a chain reaction to get other people to do it as well and the goal is uh, get hundreds and hundreds of great pieces out there great art great research to get people thinking and then to have three winners a hundred thousand dollars for first place ten thousand for second five thousand for third but then out of that group of winners and runners up, we can then communicate with people and uh, hire a crew uh, to make two or three different films a year mm -hmm. and uh, to actually finance it and then try to put it in theaters and things like that. We're out there crowdsourcing. Just like about a year ago, we had a contest for reporters. Exactly. Uh, and uh, you were one of the runners up. You didn't win. Mm -hmm. uh, Jakari Jackson uh, won for the male reporter and then was a female reporter winner. But we hired five reporters out of that, even though there were only two reporters. And uh, that was for, what was it, a $5,000 prize right. uh, for each right. person. This is a $100,000 prize. I've had more than 20 contests. We had one that was a uh, Charlie Sheen contest we did where it was $15,000. Uh, we're taking the capital that I've accrued as a syndicated radio talk show host and filmmaker and really trying to expend it on really getting aggressive because the tyrants uh, have gotten so aggressive. And there's two months uh, for people to put their film out, and regardless, we're going to be featuring excerpts of it here on the Nightly News that reaches hundreds of thousands a week. We're going to be featuring excerpts on the radio show slash TV, which is also television that reaches three million a day. We, we reach total about 15 million people conservatively a week one way or another. 
uh, and we've reached, I don't know, it's over 300 million on just one of our YouTube channels uh, mm -hmm. alone. We can show some of the viewers, uh, you know, just the Alex Jones channel. Some of my films have been seen over 40 million times free online, like the Obama deception, tens of millions of times with the other films. So I want to say, hey, I've got this platform. Uh, you can enter, and you know you're standing up against corruption, so you win that way. Mm -hmm. uh, you got a chance to win $100,000, and then you've also got a chance, whether you win or not, to then talk to us about your other ideas and then our ideas and creating, I think, really three film teams mm -hmm. in the next year uh, working with our crew to deploy that. So I'm kind of like, fire all your guns at once and explode into space. Right. Uh, I think that's a rock and roll song. Right. But the point is, is that... Uh, we're born to be free, not just born to be wild. And that, of course, means free. And so this is Operation Paul Revere. You are the Paul Revere of the 21st century. That's kind of a kind of a rant, but there's two months left. And we're getting a lot of great contacts, a lot of great early entries. But I just want the amazing filmmakers out there uh, to know that we're going to take two months to judge this and two months to play clips on air and get viewer feedback mm -hmm. as well. But but I am the, um, <clears throat> I, I'm the final judge. My crew is going to give me their take as well. And, and these are real contests. Well, one of the key things is that you're looking for new original content. You want to see what people can produce and not only in a short period of time, but you want to see original content as well. Yeah, walk through that key because we've had so many... What was happening, David and I, last week and yesterday, were sitting around talking about, yeah, a lot of good stuff coming in, but a lot of old stuff, people aren't reading the rules. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, th this is, what can you make? You, it, it's, 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 it's new, and it's proving that, because I could say, we're looking for filmmakers to work for us in new films. Established filmmakers usually have their own projects. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I probably could work. And we're open to some of that too. I mean, we're going. Yeah. You know, if they want to enter, you know, for the cash prize, it has to be new content. New you know, content. But for as far as the uh, other stuff, as far as adding yeah. crew for. You talk about your concerns and your ideas. Film has a lot of power to change minds. I mean, you've talked many times about how in Jaws they got uh, people afraid of sharks. You know, irrationally afraid of sharks. Uh, in uh, Doctor Strangelove, okay, they they ridiculed fluoridation of water. You know, really really made it look kooky. So you can do a lot of things. You could take uh, Brazil, where they took uh, authoritarian governments, ridiculed them, but really made a strong point about authoritarianism. So a story has a really a powerful way to affect people, to really change hearts and minds. And right now we've got a lot of people who are just willing to give up their, their, their liberty for the promise of security. So I think this is, you know, in terms of what's your target audience? What are you trying to, uh, you know, when you want to wake people up, what are the people, you're looking for people who are asleep, right, that you want these films to reach out to? Well, uh, again, David, I, that's why I'm so glad you're here and we're part of the last contest, because you're really a smart guy. He just crystallized everything I tried to say in five minutes. This is a big deal. We've got the bad guys, the big corporations, the globalists, <laughs> Uh, out there financing all this tyranny, all this, all this garbage, all this pro-war, anti-liberty, anti-family uh, garbage, pro-drone, pro-surveillance state, pro-GMO. But then you do see there are good people out there like Terry Gilliam and others who are putting films out like Brazil. We need to see more of that. We mm -hmm. need to see the creative force out there turned loose and realizing that there are other people out there as well that are doing this. So our target audience is basically everybody, but particularly those that are somewhat awake, but that uh, don't really get the big picture. Uh, and so really, uh, my target audience is, is trying to get people to creatively realize they have power and that there is an information war going on and that people need to get involved. Really, it's I'm a Paul Revere, you're a Paul Revere. We're trying to get other Paul Revere's to take action to trigger other Paul Revere's to have a societal shift to the fact that the authoritarians are really taking over and we're in great danger. So, uh, you know, when we say target audience, it's to awaken the sleeping giant. Mm -hmm. It is to engage in a Paul Revere event. And it could be any topic, you know, out there. It could be smart meters, Second Amendment. It could be 20 subjects. It could be uh, what's happened to a personal family. Uh, I, I mean, there's just so many ideas. This is a giant brainstorming session we're having with $115,000 in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. But that's only there to signify this is important. Mm -hmm. Right. And it could be any kind of issue, like you mentioned before. It could be somebody that's on the left, somebody that's on the right, somebody that's libertarian. You know, it, it's whatever their issue is with personal freedom, right? It's what you're looking for. Well, conservatives don't like secret arrest and torture and NDAA and Patriot Act, but 
suddenly they're where the so-called left was just five years ago with Bush. Mm -hmm. Now the so-called left won't criticize Obama with NDAA and warrantless right. wiretapping and torture. Right. I mean, I'm saying let's get past all these labels mm -hmm. and what is the tyranny that's wrong in the world and what's right in the world? Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, just, it's unlimited. It's the fish in the sea. It's what do you think is important out there? Uh, I mean, I'm really looking forward to, we're already getting some good entries in, right. but, but I'm really looking forward to seeing what you produce, mm -hmm. what you do, what comes out of this. Because we've had contests, film contests, like I said, $15,000. Was it second place, 5000 I think third place, 1000 And I mean, there were actors I've seen on TV and stuff that got involved. Oh, yeah. Uh, so this is a big deal. And I've already been in a couple of, of good-sized Hollywood movies just because Richard Linklater called and invited me to be in them. Uh, I've, I've, I've been using voiceovers and things in, in, in quite a few big movies, e even as of late, and I'm so unfocused on it, I can't remember their names, because uh, that's kind of, you know, Hollywood stuff. I'm really into you, a and the globalists are into you, too. They're spying on you. They're stealing your ideas. They're, they're watching you. That's what Google and all this is about. I'm saying let's be unpredictable. This is a big deal. This is exciting. And uh, again, I just desperately want to get the word out to everybody, this is happening. I mean, somebody could see this a week before the contest ends. Mm -hmm. And they could go out and shoot something really dynamic and from the heart that moves us. And wow, I want to work with that person. Mm -hmm. you know, who is the next great Liberty documentary filmmaker? Right, because it's not just about technical values. I mean, that's something we're looking for, but it's also about ideas. You know, it's about the ability to tell a story. You know, if you've got a good story, uh, as one person pointed out, a, a good story is kind of like the tip of the arrow. You know, now the data is the shaft, you know, but the arrow is the thing that, that pierces somebody, gets, it really makes them stop and think about it, gets them to identify with it on a visceral level, and that's what film can do. I've talked to so many people who've woken up because they've seen documentaries. Well, this is opened up to all kinds of things. It can be a documentary, it can be a fictional account, it can be There anything. you go, that's why I'm doing this. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up. Syndicated radio, 17 years. You should reach, you know, 500,000 people a day and like 2,000 and a million and 3 million a day. It, but it's still kind of this passive thing where they listen and, pe but most people say they didn't wake up because of radio. They came to the radio because of film. It's my films that nine out of 10 people say similarly connected with them and woke them up. It's the, it's the video reports, it's the mini films, it's the, and that's what exactly. I wanna do. Out of the winners, I wanna produce maybe two, for, for us, you know, where you spend a few hundred thousand dollars making them, then a hundred thousand dollars or so promoting them, sending people to film festivals. Maybe one will go film festival route, one will go the route of just right into theaters. Mm -hmm. uh, and, then, and then some other teams on a smaller budget uh, who will, you know, come and work with us and make short films every month. I mean, I'm somebody who isn't going to buy a private jet like Rush Limbaugh, which is fine with his money, and fly around a private jet. Uh, and I'm not somebody that's just going to buy 15 Rolexes. Okay, and I don't make anything near Rush Limbaugh. It makes like 50 million a year or something, or going back 80 million a year. I mean, I make a fraction of that, but I'm trying to take most of that money and try to make more money so I can, I mean, you're here, you're, you see the building, right. what's going on. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is the best initiative I can think of. Right. And it's and, and it's incredibly worthy of your time and energy. So even if you're not a filmmaker and you're watching this, go to the filmmaker message boards. You've got the real people power. Go to the IMDB chats. Go to that and tell people, hey, there's this liberty you know, uh, contest, and it's about whatever your idea of liberty is. In yeah. fact, that could be the films. What is your idea of freedom? What is your idea of tyranny? So we're not just looking for somebody who's a, a great cinematographer, videographer. I mean, that, that's great, too, if you I've can show I've seen people that. say, yeah. I sure wish I'd gone to film school and could enter this. Right. I never went to film school. Right. Yeah, a lot of I'm it, like you said. film viewed filmmakers uncelebrated in the world. That's not a power trip. I mean, I just make these, you know, bare knuckles things, stating my view and showing it. Right. And one of the most viewed in the world. Right. But I don't have the establishment singing my praises, and I don't give a damn. I'm sorry. Go right, ahead. Right, right. Well, exactly. That's The thing is, it doesn't have to be uh, a work of art, but it's got to be compelling content. And that's what you produce, is compelling content. And that's what somebody can do just with the power of being able to tell a story. And it could be something very short. You've got this anywhere from three minutes to two hours. So it can be something like a trailer. It can be a, a quick uh, example story. It's the story. essence. It's the spirit. Exactly. Um, going through some of these other things, any genre. You had product placement was one of the things that you had in there. Tell us a little bit about what well, you had. Well, yeah. I mean, to get our $115,000 back, because my goal as a free market person, not a, not a crony free market uh, uh, monopolist, uh, 
monopolist, but as someone who wants to turn the power of the people loose, we need to try to get our $115,000 back in the 10000 or so we're spending to promote it, and I think it's more than that, and mm -hmm. some of the things we're doing. Uh, so I guess we have to get about $130,000 back or so on this. And so we need traffic to InfoWars.com. We need uh, traffic to PrisonPlanet.com. And so we need somehow in the pieces to promote the websites, because that can get us some ad revenue, the radio show, uh, you know, is Alex Jones on in the background? You see the website like a TV piece. Uh, is does somebody have a conversation about? Yeah, I, I checked out, you know, Infowars.com or AlexJones.com, or maybe it's something David Knight does, or Jakari Jackson, or Melissa Melton, or Rob Dew, or Paul Watson. Something in the narrative so that something comes back to us. Because I've always learned if, if I don't try to get something back on something, mm -hmm. then you can, people say, why don't you just give your films away for free? Well, we do. I mean, you can, you, we put everything up on YouTube and other places, but we have to get some money to build our infrastructure to have contests and things like this. Right. Yeah, there's, there's one film that was at South by Southwest a couple of years ago, and you can watch it on Netflix now. It's a Spanish-language film, and you were in that. You didn't even know that you were in that, but it's uh, basically what they'd use as one of your documentaries in the background. And it's, a, it's like a film about a pandemic, uh, and uh, there's a, a couple, the main couple, they don't really understand what's going on. It's kind of like Shaun of the Dead or something. They don't really understand what's going on, and they've got a neighbor who's a prepper, and he knows everything that's going on. And so he keeps showing this guy this video or playing the video in the background. You can hear your voice. They don't show you. So it's not really the kind of product placement that we're talking about, but in a sense it is. If he had shown you, uh, you know, and, and made it clear that was where it was coming from, because sure. it kind of provides a background and the context for everything that this prepper did that kind of gets these guys sure exactly this doesn't so. have to be like the doritos thing where it's all about doritos it's so right. good msg rot your brain right. it, it doesn't need to be like that it just somehow needs to push people as a mechanism of not just here's the tyranny but by the way here's a platform fighting it mm -hmm. and so uh, it can be subtle it i can mean be, if something's yeah. really powerful and it's subtle they might win right i mean i'm not looking for infomercial infowars.com alex jones right uh yeah. I, I, I mean, obviously, it needs a bug, at least at the end, that you know, this is part of the InfoWars.com film festival. And there's a slate at the beginning, and the, those are in the, the uh, rules requirements there at InfoWars.com. Yeah, so there's slash the product contest. placement right there. Right, right. And again, this is Liberty Placement. Right. So it's coming up. Deadline is April 30th. People have got about uh, two and a half months now. I'm just super excited about this, and I'm super excited about the winners, but playing clips on the show. Oh, your point about the film festival, explain that to people. That's the most important. Well, you know, that's one of the things people uh, are looking for audiences, right? And uh, the Cannes Film Festival, they got a couple hundred thousand people go to that, but that's one of the biggest ones. Most of these film festivals, you're only gonna have about 10, 15,000 people there. Not all of them are gonna see your film. With this, you've got 417,000 people just on your one YouTube channel. And that's that, just the subscribers. Right, so I mean, one of the things that's really key for filmmakers is they want an audience. They want people to see their work, and this is a great chance for people to see what they can do. Uh, it's it's kind of like an online virtual film festival. And I hadn't thought of that, but I mean, that's exactly what it is. A giant online virtual film festival where the public, a radio show, a giant YouTube channel, they see your work, we debate it, we talk about it, and you got a chance to win $115,000. Filmmakers, they want to make films. If they want to make films, you want to make films. You want to make a lot of films every year. So this is a chance, like you said, to get their, their work out in front of people, make some money, have, have a good chance of making some big prize money, and uh, have a chance to do a lot of film work. I mean, that, that's, you know, what could be better than that? Uh, close out here, because I want you to be able to make your points and uh, your impassioned plea to folks with the logic, uh, not just my points, because there's quite a few of them there. Go ahead and recap mm -hmm. things, and thanks for having me on the show. Well, I think, you know, we, we talked about the power of Hollywood to change things, and the fact that you've got uh, movies like The Dark Knight can be used to condition people to be irrationally afraid of something like uh, going to a football game without being uh, patted and scanned down by the TSA. You know, you present that image, and that sticks in people's hearts, it sticks in their minds, we can do that sort of thing with positive images. Think of something like uh, Schindler's List or think of The Hiding Place, a Corrie ten Boom, uh, uh, someone who helped hide people from the Nazis and eventually was captured herself and sent to a concentration camp but lived to tell about it. So there's a tremendous amount of, of uh, opportunity here to change hearts and minds and that's what we want to cut loose is the, uh, the crowdsourcing capability as well as professional filmmakers. That's why we made this such a large uh, pot here to entice people in and they've got a large audience to take a look at. So uh, we hope those two things will bring in some professional filmmakers and people who want to make films, who love to make films, who have to make films. And we hope the thing that you're passionate about is film and liberty. If you are, Go to Operation Paul Revere. Take a look at InfoWars.com slash 
contest. And you'll find all the information there. It's pretty open. There's not a lot of requirements there, uh, but uh, there are a few. So take a look at what we've got there. Anything else, Alex, you want to tell us? No, it's just that, David. I mean, the history's happening now. Let's not just sit here like spectators. The system wants us to be spectators. Mm -hmm. Uh, you may have been a guy that made commercials. You may be a woman who's you know, made short films. You may be uh, a film student who's never made a film. Uh, you may be a local newscaster. Just think of a narrative in your mind. There's hundreds of films I want to make, but I'm too busy building the platform to be able to put films out to be able to do it. I mean, it's just, it's unlimited. In fact, one of my most frustrating points in my life, I've analyzed when I get angry and I'm not happy because I'm normally a very happy person is that I'm not able to express all my ideas. I'm not able to do the things I want. I mean, it's just so many of them. I really want to be a filmmaker. I really want to go make real films that are art and not, and, and, and not just you know, hardcore info mm -hmm. uh, that have still touched people. Uh, but because of the tyrants, I've got to focus on this. So I'm saying, let's kick these people's asses together. I mean, you've got passion, you've got skills out there, and you need to use them against these people. They're using it against us, against you. J awaken, sleeping giant. You are the Paul Revere. You are the resistance. And um, David, that's it. So I guess that's, that's it for this edition of InfoWars Nightly News. You want to take us out? Well, that's it for tonight. Uh, join us tomorrow night. We'll be here at uh, 7 o'clock Central, 8 p.m. Eastern.